One of the many questions federal investigators are trying to figure out now is that not only how a 20-year-old armed with an AR-style shotgun could get close enough to a former president, but uh, also what did the security and law enforcement protocols uh, call for uh, during that moment. Jillian Snyder is with me. She is an adjunct lecturer at John Jay College of Criminal Justice. Uh, Snyder was also an NYPD officer for 15 years. She worked as security detail at the UN General Assembly, among other places. She was also on scene when a former Cuomo aide was shot in 2015 during the West Indian Day Parade. Jillian, thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning, Pat. Uh, during your time at the NYPD, what did you see in place at, uh, at major events like this? There, there is clearly the, the immediate perimeter around the event, around the person you're protecting, but the, you know, this city is as good example as any that, that you just can't have eyes on everything. New York City, it's, it's quite unique in the way in which we handle details of this extent. Um, you know, we have probably more parades than any other city in the nation. We have the UN General Assembly every September. Um, New York City works very hard to establish not only the immediate perimeter um, to ensure safety within the zone, but we also provide an extended perimeter. So take the UN for an um, example. Mm -hmm. It's about seven blocks in size. We actually have about a 14-block containment for the UN General Assembly just to make sure all dignitaries remain safe. We do the same thing for parades. We not only have that parade route secured, but we extend that perimeter to ensure that, you know, passerbys can't get through and make things unsafe. So I, I want to know your thoughts when you first saw what unfolded on Saturday night, and, and I'll, I'll share my thoughts. Uh, you know, clearly you see the immediate actions of those Secret Service members who rushed to protect the president, even putting themselves in danger. Uh, so, so there is the, the heroism of that, but then there's the broader question about who was doing what to, to guard for those those uh, threats on the perimeter in that building that was not a great distance away. What went through your mind as you watched and, and uh, analyzed that pro security protocol? The S Secret Service that were on stage around former President Trump, they did their job, they did it well. They immediately created that barrier around him to keep him safe from any other harm. But you have a different team that's gonna establish that safety zone well in advance of the event. So as we know, and again, things are unfolding, this investigation will probably take months. You'll have Secret Service working in conjunction with local law enforcement to look at that rally location, see if there's any vulnerable sites. Um, in this case, they had determined that that building could pose a potential vulnerability. So my thought is, and what we technically do in the NYPD, is we would go into that building, sweep it, make sure there's no one in it, make sure the roof is clear, and then we would generally place officers at any exit or entry points to that building to avoid allowing someone on there. Now, we're still learning more of this but we're seeing that an, a ladder was apparently there and the suspect climbed up a ladder allegedly and got onto the roof. Rally goers did point him out to Secret Service and local law enforcement agencies that were there. Um, again, speculation, we're hearing that an officer climbed up. When faced with that weapon, he retreated very quickly, but the suspect was taken out. Um, I know that we're gonna learn more, so I don't wanna pass judgment mm -hmm. at this point, but I think the fact that that building, that rooftop, um, being in such close proximity to former President Trump, I think that's something that's really going to have to be scrutinized. Is the fact that they don't intend to make any big security changes at the Republican convention, is that an indication that security plans were tight already or just that the, the Secret Service is confident in its protocols? The Republican National Convention, this, this has been being planned for about 18 months, so it would actually be somewhat dangerous to try and do any major alteration to safety plans that are in place. They've been working toward this. We have Secret Service as well as local city um, law enforcement agencies that have been planning this, have been scouting out vulnerabilities, have been identifying any potential threats, um, doing threat assessments of individuals and or locations within where the Republican National convention will be placed so i think it would be it would be kind of like i said dangerous to change anything now because this has been over a year in the making thank you for joining us this morning with your insights we appreciate it thank you so much jillian snyder at john jay college of criminal justice